Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to be discussing the hypoglossal nerve, which is cranial nerve number 12. Now, first of all, just to get started, the hypoglossal nerve is a purely motor nerve. It's one of five motor nerves uh, that are cranial nerves. That is cranial nerves 3, 4, 6, 11, and 12. And the hypoglossal nerve is really going to be innervating both intrinsic and extrinsic tongue muscles. And so, for example, we have here styloglossus, hypoglossus, genioglossus. Um, understand that the suffix gloss or glossus or glossal actually refers to the tongue. Okay? In fact, the tongue's anatomical term is the glossus. Okay? So the hypoglossus is going to come in and innervate these muscles really kind of beneath where the tongue is. Okay? That's where it gets its name, hypoglossal. It's also going to be responsible for providing motor innervation to a few throat muscles. Um, these are going to be muscles in the hyoid layer of the anterior neck. So we have thyrohyoid and also geniohyoid. Okay. Now, when we think about the hypoglossal nerve, and we have to consider again, uh, it's got an upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron part. Now, the upper motor neuron is coming from the precentral gyrus in the cerebral cortex. You can see its upper motor neuron cell body right here. And we can follow its axon going down here as part of the corticobulbar tract that we talked about in a previous video. And then you can see as it goes down, it actually crosses over to the contralateral side of the brain. And this cross section right here is really just the pyramid level of the medulla oblongata. And so right here, you can actually see the hypoglossal nucleus. And here's the cell body right here of the lower motor neuron. Now remember, for any of these motor cranial nerves, which you're going to have, upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, the cranial nerve itself is referring to the lower motor neuron. Okay, It doesn't mean it can function independently of the upper motor neuron, it's just then when we talk about the nucleus of that particular cranial nerve and then the cranial nerve itself, we're talking about the lower motor neurons. Okay, So right here you can see it labeled, this is the hypoglossal nerve. These are the fibers of the hypoglossal nerve. All right, so a little bit of anatomy there. Let's talk a little bit more about the lower motor neurons, which constitute the hypoglossal nerve. So the hypoglossal nerve is going to exit the cranium inferiorly through the hypoglossal canal. Uh, you can see here that the nerve exits through that, and that's actually how it gets out of the cranium. Now, where is the hypoglossal canal? Well, it's not labeled here. But notice this large hole right here, the base of the skull. This is the foramen magnum. Um, if you look in the walls of the frame and magnum, I'll actually zoom in so you can see this uh, pretty well. There's a hole on either side. You can see one right here in the wall of the frame and magnum. There's another one over on this side. Those two holes are the hypoglossal canals. We can take a look at another picture right here. These ones are labeled as number 20. Again, this is an actual skull. A little bit hard to see because of the resolution, but again, 19, this is your frame and magnum. And then there'd be a hypoglossal canal very difficult to see. Um, there are just a couple small foramina on either side of the wall of the foramen magnum. And that's going to be where the hypoglossal nerves are going to exit out of the cranium inferiorly. And so this is representative right here of that hypoglossal canal. We can see the hypoglossal nerve descend through that. And it's actually here in yellow. Um, and it's going to go around here, um, again, lateral to the external and internal carotid arteries. And it's going to go, of course, on the lower part of the tongue region. That's where it gets its name, hypoglossal. And again, you can see it give off a bunch of branches to various muscles. Now again, as the hypoglossal nerve is traversing uh, down through the hypoglossal canal and then ultimately uh, toward the tongue region where it can innervate extrinsic and intrinsic tongue muscles, you'll notice that it's actually in close proximity to these green uh, nerve structures, which are actually a part of the cervical plexus. We can take a look at that on this picture. Again, here are the hypoglossal nerves in yellow. This would be where it's descending down from or through that hypoglossal canal. And it comes down here lateral to the carotid arteries. And then it's going to give off muscular branches to the muscles of the tongue. This one that's going down here would likely be going to either thyrohyoid or geniohyoid, those two um, anterior uh, neck muscles in the hyoid layer that it also innervates. And again, notice that it's in very close proximity and actually partially fused with a component of the cervical plexus. 
So when the hypoglossal nerve is functioning normally, again, it's going to innervate those intrinsic and extrinsic tongue muscles and then a couple throat muscles. But what happens if there's a lesion in the hypoglossal nerve? Well, here we have to worry about, is it an upper motor neuron lesion? Meaning, is it a lesion in this nerve right here, this tract, that's part of the corticobulbar tract? Or is it a lower motor neuron lesion, meaning a physical lesion of the actual hypoglossal nerve? And so what we look for to determine if there's a lesion at all is we look to see if when the person protrudes their tongue outward, if it deviates toward one side. Now, the rule is, is if you have a lower motor neuron lesion, so physically or literally cranial nerve 12 is what is lesioned, you get an ipsilateral deviation, meaning that the tongue actually deviates toward the side of the lesion. So if in this case, this person's tongue is deviating toward their right side. Therefore, if it was a lesion of the 12th cranial nerve, it would be a lesion of the right 12th cranial nerve, the right hypoglossal nerve, and so the tongue would be deviating toward the right. It's ipsilateral. However, if there was an upper motor neuron lesion, we would have contralateral deviation, and that's because we get crossing over of that upper motor neuron uh, before it actually synapses with the lower motor neuron in the hypoglossal nucleus. And so that means that if we assume this was an upper motor neuron lesion, this person's tongue is deviating to their right, it would actually be a left upper motor neuron lesion. Now, generally when we're looking at these, most of the time they're gonna be the lower motor neuron lesions. Um, and so it's going to be the actual hypoglossal nerve that's cut or transected or damaged. And so you're going to get an ipsilateral deviation. So most likely this individual who has a tongue deviation to the right, it's going to be a lesion of the right hypoglossal nerve. Now, in terms of differentiating these, there's several different ways you can do that, whether it's upper or lower motor neuron lesion. However, in lower motor neuron lesions, typically you're going to have atrophy on, on that particular side, and then also fasciculations. So if you observe any of these two things, that will rule up the fact that it's a lower motor neuron lesion, an actual damage to, the, uh, to that particular hypoglossal nerve, okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the 12th cranial nerve, hypoglossal nerve. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.